In 2019, it was revealed that the Queen Mother, Elizabeth, the wife of King George VI and Queen Consort during his reign from 1936 to 1952, had played an important role in one of the most controversial episodes involving the monarchy. Secret letters and diaries had come to light which showed that Elizabeth had been involved in trying to undermine the brief reign of her brother-in-law, King Edward VIII, who ruled Britain for less than a year in 1936 before abdicating in favor of his younger brother, Elizabeth's husband, George. The reason for Edward's abdication was the controversy aroused by his proposed marriage to Wallace Simpson a multiple divorcee from America. In her letters and diaries, Elizabeth referred to Wallace as a naughty lady and provided previously unknown information about she sought to undermine Simpson in the mid-1930s. For instance, when Edward and Wallace finally married in France in 1937, it was Elizabeth who tried to ensure that the wedding was not attended by a large royal delegation from England. While the abdication crisis is relatively well known, what is often quite overlooked is just who exactly was this naughty lady that the Queen Mother had written about. Why was her proposed marriage to Edward so controversial and what did she and Edward go on to do in the years and decades following his abdication? Though she is today known as Wallace Simpson, the woman who would be at the center of the abdication crisis in 1936 was born on the 19th of June 1896 in Pennsylvania as Bessie Wallace Warfield. Her father, Henry Warfield, was a prominent businessman who was a significant enough figure on the east coast of the United States during the Gilded Age that he ran for mayor of Baltimore in 1875. Wallace's mother, Alice, also hailed from a business family, her father being William Montagu, a noted stockbroker of the second half of the 19th century. Yet, while her family was affluent, Wallace's early life was nevertheless troubled. Her father died of tuberculosis in November 1896, just five months after she was born and her mother's relationship with her own family was poor as a result of Wallace being born out of wedlock. Despite these impediments, Wallace excelled in school. Any accounts of her life need to stress her marriages. In November 1916, she married Earl Winfield Spencer Jr., a pilot in the U.S. Navy whom she had met just a few months before they exchanged vows. The union was unhappy. Spencer turned out to be an alcoholic who had a penchant for even flying drunk. He and Wallace separated after just a few months, but they remained officially married until 1927. Throughout these years, Wallace traveled extensively through Europe and Asia. In 1928, she married for the second time, on this occasion to Ernest Aldrich Simpson an American shipping magnate who had extensive business interests in England. Her marriage to Ernest brought Wallace the surname by which she is most widely known today, Simpson, while also bringing about her relocation to London and her entry into British high society through which she would soon meet Edward, the Prince of Wales and the heir to the British throne. Prince Edward was born on the 23rd of June, 1894. He was the eldest son of King George V, who had ascended as King of Britain and Emperor of India in 1910, at which time Edward became Prince of Wales. As the heir to the throne, it was expected that Edward would marry early, most usually to a daughter of one of Europe's monarchs or prominent aristocrats so that he might begin having children. This in effect was the primary role of the British monarch by the 20th century as the king or queen of the day had ceased to have anything other than a ceremonial role in the nation's politics. However, Edward was not a conventional royal heir, and as the 1920s went on and he entered his 30s, he seemed to display no other desire to marry, while he also lived something of a playboy lifestyle by the standards of the roaring 20s. By the early 1930s, he was under increasing pressure from his father and other members of the royal family to marry and have children. In 
But when he finally became determined to settle down, his choice of partner would lead to an enormous controversy, which would see his long-awaited rule as king cut very short. Wallace's second marriage was as unhappy as her first, and both she and Ernest were both unfaithful to each other before long. She first met Prince Edward at a social gathering in January 1931. Their relationship did not begin at this time, though they remained acquainted and would meet often at social gatherings in London. Although the timeline is not 100% clear, they appear to have begun seeing each other in 1934, at which time their relationship became sexual. Wallace was still not separated from her estranged husband and would remain married to Ernest until 1937, an issue which would contribute to the controversy surrounding her and Edward's relationship in 1936. Though few others knew of it, in 1934 and 1935, the king himself was aware of Edward's new love interest and was deeply troubled by it. The social mores of the 1930s would make it very controversial if Edward were to marry a multiple divorcee, one who additionally was American and was still married to her second husband when Edward and she began dating. Such was the concern which this ignited in the king and the government that by 1935 the British Secret Services had begun compiling a file of information on Simpson. Edward's father, King George V, died on the 20th of January 1936. He had been ill for some time owing to a major lung problem which was exacerbated by his chain smoking. As is the custom with any monarchy, Edward immediately became king upon his father's death. A coronation when one occurs is simply a formal ceremony whereby the new monarch is presented to his or her subjects. Such an event was very important in ancient and medieval times when people, many of whom would have never laid eyes on their new sovereign, flocked to London and other cities to see the new king or queen crowned. Edward's coronation was scheduled to take place in May 1937, but it would never occur, though this does not mean that he was not king in all essential ways. Once he became monarch, his relationship with Wallace became even more problematic. As soon as he ascended to the throne, he made it clear to both the extended royal family and the government led by conservative Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin that he intended to press ahead with marrying Wallace. For her part, Simpson had filed for divorce from Ernest and was often heard saying in 1936 that when Edward's coronation took place in early summer of 1937, she expected to be crowned as Queen Consort. Baldwin's government and many members of the royal family had other plans, though. Throughout 1936, they began maneuvering behind the scenes to either force Edward to change the course or else potentially remove him from the throne. The issue finally came to a head in the late autumn and early winter as information began being leaked to the press about Edward's plan to marry Wallace Simpson. Events proceeded quickly thereafter, and it was soon made clear to Edward that he could either marry Wallace or remain king. He could not do both, however. He chose the former, and on December 11th, after a radio broadcast address to the nation, he abdicated the throne. He was slowly succeeded by his brother, who took the regnal name of King George VI. The abdication crisis of 1936 was not the end of the controversy surrounding Wallace and Edward. Things became even more scandalous in the years that followed. When Edward stepped down as king, he and Wallace were granted the titles of Duke and Duchess of Windsor and were given a huge financial settlement and large pension from the British government to compensate for Edward's loss of the throne. But it was also made clear to them that it might be best for them to move away from England for a certain length of time, or ideally even permanently. 
Accordingly, they relocated to France, where they eventually married in the summer of 1937, once Wallace's divorce from Simpson was finalized. As we saw at the outset, George VI's wife, the new Queen Consort Elizabeth, took measures to ensure the wedding was not attended by much of the royal family. However, despite the best efforts of Elizabeth and many others to move on from the controversy of 1936, Edward and Wallace were determined to remain in the public spotlight. In France, they had come to the conclusion that they could now carve out a position as unofficial British ambassadors to the world. In line with this, a tour of many countries was planned. First on the list was Germany, where the Nazis had been in power since 1933. Edward was staunchly opposed to the rise of communism in many parts of Europe and viewed the Nazis as a good bulwark against the rise of communism. Accordingly, when he and Wallace toured the country for 10 days in mid October 1937, he was complimentary of the Nazi regime. During the tour, he and Wallace met figures such as the propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels and the head of the new German Air Force, Hermann Goering. They even had a private audience with Hitler at the end of their German visit. There are suspicions, which have never been fully proved, that Edward was in talks with the Nazis from this point onwards to once again become King of Britain in the event of a Nazi takeover of the country. Such concerns became even more acute following the outbreak of the Second World War in September 1939. At that time, Wallace and Edward were living in Paris. On the one hand, the fact that they fled the French capital in advance of the German conquest of the city in the early summer of 1940 would suggest that they were not conspiring with the Nazis. But when they headed into Spain and then to Lisbon and Portugal, they took up residence at the home of Ricardo Espirito Santo, a Portuguese banker who was known to have extensive business connections in Germany and on whom the British intelligence services had begun compiling a dossier. The suspicion is that the Windsors were now in contact through Espirito Santo with Hitler in Berlin, even as the Germans began their air and naval bombardment of Britain in an effort to force the island nation into surrendering. Moreover, although Wallace and Edward left Portugal soon afterwards to take up residence in the British controlled Bahamas, Edward stayed in contact with Espirito Santo for some time. In the end, Britain was never defeated by Germany, and there was no opportunity to have George VI deposed, but the suspicion remains down to this day. In the aftermath of the Second World War, the Windsors returned to their life in exile in Paris. These were difficult years for them in some respects, as stories continue to appear from time to time concerning their associations with the Nazi regime in the late 1930s and early 1940s. These ties would cast a shadow over the rest of their lives. Despite this, the couple would continue to live on as celebrities in the French capital. In the 1960s, Edward's health deteriorated owing to his lifelong chain smoking and genetic bronchial problems, which had previously cut short both his father and his brother's lives. When he died in the early summer of 1972, his royal funeral was held in England, where there was a national display of grief for this most peculiar king who had ruled Britain briefly three and a half decades earlier. Wallace lived out the remainder of her days in France, supported by an allowance from Queen Elizabeth II, her niece in law. By the late 1970s, as she entered her 80s, she began suffering from dementia and also lost the ability to speak in the early 1980s. She eventually died on the 24th of April 1986, just shy of her 90th birthday. Despite the manner in which her entry into the royal family had been resisted a half a century earlier, her funeral was held at Windsor Castle and she was interred next to Edward in the royal crypt.